Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. What is this? It is Monday night, August 8th, 2022 at 8 p.m. That's right, 8, 8 at 8. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of the Better on Draft podcast, the Michigan Beer Series, episode number 30. Bringing in my co-host real quick, we've got Tito uh, already back. We can't get rid of him. We can't shake him. What you drinking? (laughs) Well, like you said, you can't shake me. I'm back in action already. Um, Tonight, I'm drinking a Dover Stout by old nation awesome and wendy what do you got over there i have got the middle Kolsch ginger Kolsch. nice summer beer well i am going just like it would be a friday i am starting off with an amber ale i've also got a fat tire and a smittix next to me which i am excited to get into uh it's part of the friday episode i bought maybe a few too many beers uh my my heart was there to drink all of them, but my uh, my gut did not allow me to drink them. But we do have a guest in studio tonight uh, coming back to help uh, us get ready for the upcoming Burning Foot Beer Festival. Alan, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys doing today? Great. What are you drinking? I am drinking a Prague Underground from City Built Brewing Company. They're Czech Pilsner. <laughs> And it is delicious. So good. So good. So All right, good. let's and gotta get be some of the best can art on there. For sure. I know, right? <laughs> I look at that thing, man. Who doesn't love that line set? It's awesome. It's now, if, awesome. You're, if you're listening to the podcast, obviously you can go check us out on our YouTube, youtube.com forward slash better on draft. You can actually watch the video and see that can art for sure. Uh, but we have in just uh, two and a half weeks, I believe, uh, the upcoming Burning Foot Beer Festival. Um, it looks like it might, yeah, two and a half weeks. I think my math is correct. Um, You're right. With that in mind, uh, what is the first thing we should expect? Let's start with the, the music. I mean, you have your band lineup ready to go. Uh, what should we expect as, uh, for me, I'm going to be honest, this is my first time ever coming. I'm excited because I am a, uh, a huge Everlast fan. Um, Whitey Ford Scenes the Blues is easily one of my favorite albums, and that was one of those, back when Rhapsody was a thing, that album got so much playtime on my uh, Microsoft Zune. Um, that's, <laughs> I, I'm trying to date myself, really it wasn't Microsoft Zune, it was like my I, iPhone 3. Um, but we've got Everlast, who else is going to be showing up? Oh, wow. First of all, you have all the name drops. So the Microsoft Zune, like Whitey's Ford Blues. I love it, man. I love it. So as always, we have a full, full, full day of music. So we have two different music stages set up. We have an acoustic stage set up by the water. You're going to see three to four different acoustic bands playing there, all local acts from the West Michigan area. And then on the opposite side of that circle, as you know, we're set up in a, a huge circle. So when you enter the area, you're surrounded by breweries, you're surrounded by music on both ends. So on the main stage, we're going to start off the day with Chocolate Starfish. They are the Limp Biscuit tribute band that represents the Midwest. They're out of control. They go in full decor, full costume, and they take that um, that music very seriously. They have remastered all the tracks. So they re- they play them originally and they sound just like the band. They do an amazing job. So after Chocolate Starfish gets done, then we have Pacifier coming on. They are out of Savannah, Georgia. They have a huge following. They kind of fit that like reggae rock, um, like kind of like a slightly stupid or a revolution sort of band. They are They're coming on after them. Um, after Pacifier gets done, then we have Lit. Lit comes on. They're an early 90s, mid 90s um, alternative rock band. They sing My Own Worst Enemy and Miserable and a lot of really, really, really good tunes. So after Lit gets done, then Everlast comes on. So Everlast, obviously, Ken, as you were just talking, like has a very deep catalog. He's still, um, it's covering a lot of his House of Pain music. He does all of his original songs. He's doing his collaborations with Santana. Like you're going to hear a huge, huge, huge catalog of music. 
And then when Neverlast is done, then Plain White Tees comes on after that. So you have a full day of really, really, really good bands, uh, no matter if you're going to the main stage or out to the acoustic stage, like it's going to be out of control. Now, are we going to see a, a special guest when Everlast is up doing House of Pain music with the Chocolate Starfish version of uh, DJ Lethal? I can't guarantee what will happen. I just know backstage there's a lot of conversations that happen and sometimes spontaneous things occur. Burning Foot obviously is a good environment for that. We saw that a couple of years ago when we had Everclear and Sponge playing the very last song that they came on with. They had Sponge come back up with them and cover an upper clear tune. And it was a really special moment. As you remember a couple of years ago when I was on the show, I didn't realize that Everclear and Sponge toured together on their very first tour. And what <laughs> happened that year when they came to Burning Foot is they collabed together on the very last song and made a very special moment out on that beach. So who knows what we'll see this year. All right. Well, I'm going to pass it over to Wendy. I want to know about the beer. What do you have new this year that we are looking forward to? So this year, we have a lot of very, very, very special things happening. First, uh, we are moving to 98 breweries at this point. Now, we're on our way to 100. We'll probably have a couple secret ones kind of coming at the last minute. So I would say it's safe to bet we'd be at 100 breweries out on the beach that represent six states at this point. One of them uh, that's a new one joining Burning Foot is Stone Brewery. Now, Stone Brewery has been around for a long time, but their team out of California, not just the local guys, is super excited to come here. So from what I hear, Stone is sending some special stuff from California into Michigan to put on the beach as well. Now, Three Floyds last year, that was their very first beer festival in Michigan, and they didn't realize how great it was to actually set up on the beach. So Three Floyds is telling us they're sending up some secret stuff as well. We don't know what it is yet, but we're hearing there's some amazing things coming. Uh, what okay. state says it that they're coming from? I'm excited because, you know, I like to travel around and yeah. try the different breweries. So we have breweries out of Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Wisconsin, California. And uh, we have one out of uh, Missouri that's coming. So we actually have seven states. So Shaffley is going to join us out of, out of uh, St. Louis as well. Fantastic. What's uh, What's one of the beers that you're excited to try? Do you have any yet? Oh, man, I got to keep looking through the list. There are, you know, I'll tell you this. I love to see breweries that come in from out of state, but the breweries that are in our backyard, like what they're able to bring, they, they truly bring their A game. So Pigeon Hill is always one of my favorites. Like they're in our hometown, but every year, they bring an entire draft list of one-offs and they don't tell anyone what's coming to the very last minute. So to see, you know, somebody in your backyard bring 10 different beers and nobody's ever tried those. I always make sure I stop by their booth just to, just to see what they've got coming. So to me, the surprise of getting in and seeing everything that's coming there, those are always my favorite beers to, to try. That's always fun. Tito. Yeah. So you covered the music, covered the beer. Let's talk about the food. I mean, it looks like you got some new uh, some new vendors coming out. Can you talk about the food and who you got coming back and, and who you got new coming? Yeah. So every year, you know, we, we try to support local. We're hosted in Muskegon. So Muskegon restaurants, if we can bring them to the beach, that's what we're working towards. So we have We've always had um, six food food vendors out there. We're adding two more this year. As as the the um, crowd grows, we need to extend the food offerings we have there. So this year we're adding Tiki Boys, which is a great restaurant in Lakeside. They specialize in Hawaiian cuisine. Um, they do some amazing stuff from different rice bowls to you know burritos to you name it like th that hawaiian fair those guys 
hit that. And they are a passionate group of local chefs that just kills it. And then the other food vendor we're adding this year is Rolling Stone Pizza. And they are a mobile um, wood-fired oven. We're going to set them up on the beach. Um, Charlie and Rocky, man, those guys are the real deal. Going from like creating their dough in-house, like working with specialized yeast, working with the best flour they can get, all the way from shaving parm over the top of your pizza to like fresh cut pepperoni. Like it is the real deal. And that's what we want to bring to anybody who comes in from out of town that's going to Bernie, but it's the food vendors and the cuisine that you get represents our backyard. And we want you to have the best meal you can while drinking the best craft beer that you can and, and just love it. So. Okay. I'm going to pass it back to Wendy real quick. She got a couple more questions for you. So one of the things that I've always thought was really cool about burning foot was that um, you can sleep on the beach. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So we have, we have two different campgrounds set up. Um, we have a RV camping area, which is up near the Muskegon channel. It's within walking distance of us, but if you have a trailer or an RV, you're able to come up there and camp uh, right near the water. And then we also have a tent camping area. And that tent camping area has bonfire pits on it. It's set up in the sand and you're right next to the Muskegon shore. So you can come and set up your tent site earlier that day, hang out on the beach for the day. The deck is right next to us. You can grab some lunch or an early afternoon cocktail. And then you can come over to the festival from there. And then when you're done, you basically walk right next door and your campsite's ready for you. It's a truly unique experience to be able to go to a beer festival on the beach and then tent camp on the beach along with it. That's fun. Um, how do they get tickets if they're wanting to do the tent camping? Is there like a separate registration? Yeah, so all of our tickets run through our website and our Facebook page. So Facebook, Burning Foot Beer Fest, and then online, burningfoot.beer being the website. There's a buy ticket link right there. And then that'll let you buy your general admission tickets, VIP tickets, tent camping, shuttle, designated driver, whatever ticket you're looking for, you can get it right from there. Now, each tent camping site allows you to have up to four people on that tent site. So it costs you 75 bucks a night, but you can have four people stay on that site. So it's cost you, you know, less than 20 bucks a head. You can get in there early in the morning, set up your site, hang out all day, come to the festival, and then go back after that. It's a very easy, affordable way to like hang out at the beach for the day. It sounds like a lot of fun, but what if I'm not a tent camper? Um, have you guys worked out anything with any area hotels, anything like that? We have. So we have two hotels, the Delta and the Shoreline Inn, that are kind of our official hotels to stay at. Um, unfortunately, they we have a large number of followers, and those hotels... Um, they get sold out early on in the year. So at this point, it'd be very difficult to find a hotel room there. From what I'm hearing, um, Grand Haven or Grand Rapids are now the nearest hotels to stay at. So we always recommend folks get a hotel as early as you can, check Airbnb or camp on the beach. It's the only time of year you can actually camp on the beach in Muskegon as well. So this is, even if you're not normally a tent camper, it's a really unique way to kind of get out there and camp. So I see this is your seventh annual, you know, beer fest that you guys, you've been doing this for a little while. And in order to last that long, you got to have some really good sponsors. Can you talk to us a little bit about the type of sponsorship you've been able to maintain over the years? And, and if you have some new sponsors coming out this year, or if maybe somebody's listening, and they're interested. Yeah. Yeah. So we're always looking for great sponsors. Um, you know, we're kind of picky about the sponsors we bring on, actually. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that sponsors that come in understand what we're trying to do. Like, we really want to create a unique environment. And um, 
some of the new sponsors we have, we have a couple of credit unions coming on. We have four Fred credit union out of Manistee. We have a community choice credit union, which earlier today just sponsored the stage for us. They're a, they're a new rebranded credit union in the Muskegon area. Um, we have a couple of really great cannabis shops, one of them being Grassy Knoll, that's actually providing shuttle service from their facility along Seaway Drive out to the beach and back. And then, of course, you get some party favors and a free lunch along with it. But <laughs> yes, you could still, you know, go to Grassy Knoll <laughs> and enjoy your time there. <laughs> um, you know, we we have great industry sponsors from the brewing industry. Um, we have great financial sponsors, insurance sponsors, uh, real estate companies. You know, Real Estate West has always sponsored our um, cups every single year. They've been amazing. You know, it's my cousin that still does it. You know, Tom Serial, Real Estate West. I got to give him a plug. <laughs> but, you know, they support our initiative and we can't thank those those sponsors enough. They they do an amazing job. Our distributors always stand up. Um, they are um, guild members. They support the initiative we have here. Um, you know, each year we, we're fortunate to bring on new folks and and continually build build this festival to try to represent uh, the culture of the west side of Michigan and the amazing beer we have in Michigan and in the Midwest. Cool. Thanks for that. I'll pass it back over to Ken. All right. So as we mentioned, this is going to be my first year. Uh, so let's let's help me build a survival guide. Um, I am well uh, well versed in both concert attending as well as uh, festival attending. But when you mix them together, it kind of scares me a little bit, um, just because there's so much that I'm going to want to do. Uh, let's, let's start with a survival guide. What time do the doors open and how many tastings am I getting for my entry? Yeah. So if you're on general admission, your gate opens at 3 PM. Now we run three to 10 PM. So you have seven hours in this festival ground. Now, if you're VIP or special guest, your gate opens at 2 PM. So you have eight hours inside the festival grounds to really enjoy your experience. So if you're a first time goer, gates open at three, um, really understand your surroundings. So we are set up in a circle format, which means when you walk through the front gates, 360 degrees all around you is music, beer, art, the water, everything you wanna see. All you got to do is simply turn around and you're going to see all of it. So, Ken, for you, I would say as soon as you enter the gates, try to visit our nonprofit sponsors. Those two folks, um, one of them is Noah's Project, and they will let you check your shoe, coat, sweater, bag, whatever you want. If you want to go barefoot in the sand, it takes a couple bucks. They'll take your shoes. They'll take your sandals, whatever you want. They'll store it for you for the day. That way you can go barefoot in the sand and really enjoy your time. On the other side of that, you're going to find Noah's, uh, not Noah's Project, you're going to find Kids Food Basket. They help provide meals to underprivileged children in the school system and do lunch and dinner service to them. They're selling pretzel necklaces. As you know, a beer festival, the grand pretzel necklace is an amazing thing to wear around you. If you buy one from them, you're going to support local kids who have a hard time getting meal service in the school system that we've got. We want you to enjoy that time and enjoy supporting local nonprofits. Outside of that, walk the circle, visit the 98 breweries we've got. Um, you'll also see some sponsors on the inner circle. We have some breweries in there along with um, uh, White Flame and... Uh, who else is in there? Uh, they bring the thing. Jeez, I'm drawing a blank on them. Anyway, <laughs> they're out of Ada. Um, you know, there's some really great breweries. There's some body painting happening in the middle of the circle as well. So whether you want to watch the models get painted as like earth elements, or you want to get an airbrush tattoo yourself, you can go visit that. Visit the beach. You can walk into the water with a beer. It's the only time you're actually able to step into Lake Michigan with a beer in your hand and really enjoy your time. 
Um, as the night falls, you know, grab some food from a local food vendor, go visit one of the bonfires uh, that are set up all along the shoreline, and then listen to some great music. I mean, it's truly a unique environment when you're out there. Just walk around and enjoy your time. So the goal is to to go from start to end. Like you're you're you want people to be there and enjoy it the entire time. When does the music start? Music starts a uh, half an hour after the main gates open. Okay. So main gates open at three three thirty uh, is when is when music starts. Now there's always a huge huge line of people, just like every beer festival, standing an hour ahead of time. We usually get that entire line inside of the festival within 45 to 50 minutes. So we always wait a half an hour to start music. So even if you're way back, you know, half mile out, trust that that line moves quick and we won't start music till a half an hour after between gates open. So you may only may have to wait five, 10 minutes to get inside. You know, if you hear music playing, Trust me, you're walking, you're on your way, you'll be inside soon. And I, I didn't don't think you you had um you mentioned an answer. How many tasting tokens tickets do I get for my entry? So you get 15 tickets. So you get 15 three ounce samples with that, which for all the beer that we have, that is a very, very, very good amount of sampling tickets that you get. I think it's the same you get with all the Michigan Brewers Guild stuff. And then each ticket outside of that's just a buck. So for another 20 bucks, you get another 20 tasting tickets and they will go a long ways. I, I wish everyone went to exactly three ounces, but maybe somebody's, you know, takes a little bit extra pull or something like that. And you know, it happens. It happens. <laughs> uh, well, when you're there for seven to eight hours, you know, trying to plan it and go through, you know, two tastings an hour, that's definitely within the realm of possibility. Um, I know for myself, when you mix in the heat and mix in tasting, obviously stay hydrated. How do you guys deal with uh, making sure all of your consumers are hydrated, drinking water, and uh, staying safe? Wow. So this year we have a new sponsor, Cold Break. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They're out of Grand Rapids. They make some amazing jockey boxes. So Cold Break is our official water sponsor this year. So they're bringing four, four tap jockey boxes out there and we're hooking up filtered water systems to each one of those so those jockey boxes will be packed with ice so you can go get a constant stream of water you can bring in an empty water container and fill it up all day with fresh cold water now if you don't want to bring in a container and carry it with you noah's project and kids food basket will have cold ice packed bottles of water that you can just buy from them and then all of the money that you uh, spend with them goes 100 percent to them as well and if i'm staying at the campground do i have access to get in and out of the campground or am i locked out until i uh am done for the day no that's the beautiful part since the campground's right next to us you can come and go as you please so if you check into the campground that morning you can bring in a cooler with food and, and beverage inside of that. And then you can have lunch at the campground, you know, hang out for the day. You can walk over to the festival grounds, hang out, have some beer. If you want to come back over to your campground for dinner, you can go over there, grab some food, and then come back in for the concerts at the end of the night. So you can come and go as you please. That's actually good to know in case I need to... Uh take a minute to rest in between bands or, you know, maybe uh, relax a little bit. I know uh, I'm my, my drinking ability is not what it used to be. Um, so I can't party all day like I used to. Um, and I think I'm the youngest one on this panel anyway. So and everyone's just like, yeah, whatever, let's go. Let's drink. Um, Ken, I heard you guys have a whole crew coming over. So like, you've got to, you know, you got to sell it, man. You got to do it. Up. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm honest with myself more than anything else. And that's who I need to be honest with. Cause if I think I'm going to be able, I, I did Friday and Saturday at the guild festival. And that was my first beer festival. And God knows how long, or well, I did go to the spring one in Traverse city, but nonetheless, trying to match up what I used to do at beer festivals is just, it just doesn't happen anymore. Um, so that's great to know though, uh, because we are going to be camping. We're bringing, uh, six of us that are going to be there, uh, camp. All of us are going to be camping. All of us are going to be getting in and out. Um, is there a, a B 
beer? I, I, I know Tito kind of asked you, I believe, is there a beer or brewery that might be new or exciting for you to bring in that this is their first time or your first time having them? You know, there are other than stone. There's always an other yeah, well, you know, stone's been around a long time. So I, I really can't advocate for stone coming in. Like I, I mean, I love that they're there and I love that they're excited about coming. But as as we talked a couple of years ago, you asked me the same question. And I had said that Reed City was one of my favorite breweries to come there. And they're a small brewery in a small town, but they made great, great product. You know, each year I search for the smallest brewery coming in and and the um, amount of beer that they're going to bring in with them. Not by volume, but like the specialty beers that are there. Right now, I haven't picked my favorite. There's I'm debating between a couple, but we have a Burning Foot app. And if you download that app on Android or Apple, you will then be able to see all the breweries coming and all of the beers that they've got as well. So definitely download the Burning Foot app now and you'll be able to see everything that's there. The reason we did that is if a brewery changes a beer at the last minute, they have the chance to pull that beer and pull something else into it. So that is the most up-to-date beer list we have, which we're pushing a lot of the breweries to make sure they fill that in. So I'm constantly kind of like reading the app to see what I'm most excited about. And brewers have a lot going on, so not all the beer is up-to-date. So I have not picked my favorite yet. Next week, I will know my favorite beer. But I'll tell you that this, the Prague from, from City Bill, Ed, I'm giving him a shout out at the moment. I really do love this beer. <laughs> and the fact that he owns a house in Lakeside, like a mile from Burning Foot is also a pretty nice thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with the Prague. Um, so there's another, there's another aspect of the festival that, you know, looking at your website that I wanted to bring into it. What's new evolving around art? Because you you, yeah. you you noticed that you stated that art is a big big factor that you bring into Burning Foot Festival as well. What are you bringing this year as far as the art aspect of it? So art has so art for us was like um, display and function. So okay. a few years back we did a functional piece that was different art um, earth elements, and those were also charging stations. So you would meet around the charging station. It was like sun, wind, fire. You could charge your phone, but that was also like a meeting spot, like a hub. So after last year, the temp was like 92 degrees. It was full sun. It was really, really hot out there. So we looked at safety. How do we build something that's functional? It's um, attractive from, from an art standpoint, and that it could help keep people cool. So we have a cool down station uh, that's built of different totems and then those totems have like misting spraying stations underneath them and you can kind of like walk through this exhibit and that will help cool you down at the same time so it's really more of like a pass-through element um, but it's going to be set up near the water you'll be kind of like able to walk through it lee brown who is the proprietor for the muskegon art museum is on our board and um, earlier this year they had kind of a like um, nine hole golf exhibit that they put inside the museum and some of those pieces that got dismantled are actually being brought out and they're going to help build um, this cool down station for us so this year's art piece will be a little more functional uh, but it'll still have some really cool elements to kind of like walk through it's 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 almost like I don't want to say it for lack of better term like Andy at Starving Artist always built a haunted house which it's kind of art in its own way we're doing the same thing. You kind of walk through it, but it helps cool you down on a hot summer day. That's cool. It's something to at least, you know, break the heat and is artistic. That's a really cool idea. Wendy? So uh, what is, how about tell us a story of something really cool that's happened in the past that just always makes you smile when you think about the festival? Man, there are a lot of stories. I don't know if I can share all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the one we want <laughs> all right okay okay i'm going to i'm going to share a story with you and those two folks will probably laugh and be mad at me at the same time but 
this is this is part of what makes burning foot so great um the sense of culture that's out there and like community is what we always love so the very 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 first year we were very young in in how we set things up and there was a very large sense of free spirit in this which is still there but it's a little different so um two of our friends that represented a brewery out of Kalamazoo were kind on each other let's just say they weren't together but they were kind on each other the end of the festival we might have heard something happening in one of the areas of the festival grounds we didn't look but anyway a couple months later we hear that those friends of ours had conceived a child and that was the very first burning foot baby that ever happened and it was year one and it was you know, friends of ours brock and chelsea you already did great friends they're awesome people so so a couple years later they have their beautiful daughter she's amazing they come back to the festival not year two but year three and they are enjoying consumption again something happens a couple months later we hear we're pregnant again and i'm like wait is that burning foot baby number two and they're like yes it is so i'm like when you come to our festival you can't drink anymore buddy you like i love you but you can't drink so we have two burning foot babies that have come out of that which i'm sure there's probably more than that but anyway it's some of our favorite stories because they're dear friends of ours but i'm like Buddy, when you come to the beer festival, you can't consume alcohol <laughs> anymore. You gotta like keep it under control. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, you know, we there's all kinds of really funny stories like that. But the fact that you know, friends of our anyway, it's 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 always a good story. Always a good story. It starts from the very first year and kind of builds on. So, <laughs> at once, but twice. So I know uh, twice, I was... but twice is what makes it funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's right so I was looking on the website and I see that there is a spot to volunteer you know I am a um professional volunteer basically so I'm always interested in um are you guys still taking volunteers in case somebody wants to come out and wants to get more involved doesn't just want to be there drinking beer yeah so we do we have um we have a few spots left we we have an amazing 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 following of um volunteers who come back year after year i think we have uh 20 or 30 spots left most of those are clean up on sunday uh we have a couple of graveyard shifts um as you know we we try our very best to be a zero footprint uh festival so the graveyard shift is actually separating trash and putting it into compostable and recyclable and what actually goes to the landfill. We we stay up overnight and tear apart every bag and make sure it's all separated and disposed of uh, appropriately. So we have some graveyard shifts and we have some cleanup on Sunday shifts. Um, but that volunteering comes along with a lot of really good hospitality. Uh, we try to never take for granted the volunteers who help us out. Um, so, you know, I've, the, the festivals on Saturday, on Thursday night, we do a uh, brewers or a, a volunteer training session um, at Unruly Brewing Company. Um, we, it's, it's really good. It gives you a chance to meet all of the captains, all of the staff members that are out there. Um, Unruly is kind enough to give a, a deal to all of the volunteers, uh, a, a deal on beer for that night. And then Friday, uh, we do our brewers and volunteer party. So we actually go out to the beach this year. And um, some of the bands that are showing up uh, Saturday are actually there Friday night and hanging out with us. The brewers are out there hanging out with us. It's all the volunteers, which we have about 450 volunteers actually get to come out. We uh, give them dinner for the night. We have some hosted beer for the night. Some of the bands, you get a chance to meet them along with it. Some of our um, special sponsors are there along with it. So it's a really, really, really cool environment where you're able to go out, have uh, a fun time before the festivities happen Saturday and, um, and uh, enjoy your time. That's I mean, awesome. I love to hear that. That's a good sell for me to want to volunteer. Uh, <laughs> 
next year next year <laughs> right yeah. next year yeah now last year when we interviewed you you had a really uh solid thought you were gonna bring uh kind of like burning foot children you might have another name for them um not like on fall but uh do you have uh, any upcoming bands that might be a, a secret for this year or next year you're gonna try to work towards yeah not not yet so I, i'll tell you this because you know obviously ken for some reason you seem to pull all of the things i don't want to share out of me so <laughs> uh, <laughs> i gave you the opportunity before the show to just you know i know i know so we i'll tell you this um early on this year we we had a lot of different bands we were talking through so on our radar um and we had active conversations with them. We were talking to the offspring. Uh, they were very much an active band. Uh, it just didn't work out with routing there. They were in Japan and we couldn't get them brought back in time. Um, Sublime with Rome was part of that as well. Like really, really, really good conversation with them. Um, uh, Jillian Marley and the Whalers was also another one. I was I was well. actually going to say, because yeah. I, I saw Sublime with Rome with the Whalers, um, by far one of the best shows I've ever been to. Uh, so when you said Sublime with Rome, I'm like, man, the Whalers would be really awesome at Burning yeah. Foot. Yeah, I w I'll tell you, they are very much within our radar. Like we are looking at them closely. We're a lot of it comes down to like, routing and where they're at whether they're going on tour they want to say west coast east coast like it gets it gets tough um as we try to book everything together it's not we have like what we want and then what's realistic are two very different things i i feel confident in the next couple of years you'll see sublime with rome you'll see jillian marley with the whalers You'll see slightly stupid out there. Um, you're gonna see a lot of really cool bands that are that, that are fitting that vibe. Um, I know Blink 182 was one of the ones that are on our radar as well. Uh, there were some light conversations. So as we grow and as we pull in like more bands, I, obviously you can tell from when we talked last year, the bands that were out there and what we brought on this year, you can see that growth that comes along with it. Um, so we always want to keep bringing better breweries, better beer, better bands into, into that mix and, and not have to change the price point very much for you to see these amazing artists. Before we, uh, we get to our final questions, there is one question just because, um, obviously knowing, uh, I, I, I'm not a big fan of lit, but I know of lit. I know the plain white tees. I know everlast, um, but your, your limp biscuit cover band really doesn't fit with those other bands, those other groups, those other songs They're you know, limp, yeah, Bis limp biscuit is a very <laughs> vulgar um, group is, is the chocolate starfish group more toned down? Are they, are they more clean or are we getting, um, you know, limp biscuit, as if it was Limp Biscuit. You're getting um, you're getting a cover of Limp Biscuit. Those guys are based out of Muskegon as well, and over the last year, grown to be a very, very, very popular group. Um, they they dress and have the stage performance of a great Limp Biscuit tribute band. You know, they're a little more PC, you know, they're, if you watch the Woodstock 99 documentary, it's called lately, like, they're not going to be tearing down plywood and doing crowd surfing with it. Like, they're a great band, they do an amazing job. Um, and they, they do respect to the covers that they've got as well. Like, you're going to hear some, some good Limp Bizkit music, and it's going to sound just like those guys. I mean, I was a kid in the '90s, so I was definitely in the new metal uh, world. That's how I knew like DJ Lethal was in House of Pain and um, <laughs> that whole thing. But as we uh, we round the corner, we're going to be finishing the Michigan Beer Series episode number thirty for Burning Foot 2022. I'm guessing this might be a yearly thing, Alan. 
Um, so we might need to plan a little bit more in advance next year for, uh, for us so that people can, uh, make sure they can get hotels. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll stay on top of that, but let's go through with our final questions, starting with Wendy. Wendy, what's your final question for Alan? So I'm going to say I'm putting it on my calendar now so that I will have it free next year. Dang it. Um, my question is, uh, what new brewery do I have to try? Oh, well, all right, hold on. hold on. I got to pull it up here because I need to, I need my brewery list in front of me. You know, there's a very they good brewery. Changing. I was going to say there's a very good brewery list. If you go to uh, mibeermap.com and download the Michigan Brewery Map app free for everyone, uh, including our yeah, current, our new sponsor, uh, Burning Foot Beer Festival, uh, who helps us make sure that app is up to date daily. You know, I, I would say that um, geez, any small brewery we can find is, is good. Broadleaf is doing amazing work. Like, I love the beers that they're putting out. So definitely try Broadleaf. Um, they're probably one of my favorites to be attending this year. Yeah, definitely one of my favorites. Tito, what's your final question for Alan? All right, so since... Since Nick isn't here, I'll go ahead and ask the question. Um, you're getting home after a day of work, right before Burning Fest. What is that go-to beer that's in your refrigerator, other than Prague, of course? Um, what is your go-to <laughs> beer that you that that's just sitting in your fridge that's always there whenever you want it, waiting for you? You know, there's a lot of local beer that sits in my fridge. Now, if I need a garage beer, then I'm grabbing PBR or Miller Highlight all the time. <laughs> Just because I need a lawnmower here every once in a while. But I'll tell you what, you know, Pigeon Hill is making some amazing beers. They're, they're Catalina uh, Mexican lagers, amazing. They actually just released a um, Walter Goes to Belgium, which is a gin barrel aged beer, which is barrel aged in our gin barrels from Wonderland Distilling Company as well. Shameless prog plug for my distillery. <laughs> um, but you know, like Grand Armory's Wheeze and the Juice is always, always, always great. You know, I love Unruly's Rebel Rouser. Um, man, the Rake's got that uh table beer, the two, two, three, one table beer. Like, I love that. Like, there's a lot of really, really, really great beer in our backyard. So I try to keep my my beer fridge stock full of amazing local beer as much as i can cool awesome and one more time what was the name of that distillery wonderland distilling company and where is wonderland distilling company in lakeside and it's on your way to burning foot it's maybe a mile back so off of all the amazing craft beer you had if you need to cleanse your palate with a good cocktail hit up wonderland on your way back all right, my final question for you, and this is going to be a, uh, uh, I, I want to see how you feel, how confident you are. Um, how fast do you think you could run from end to end in the sand at Burning Foot? Like, what's what's the distance wise? Like, how fast? Oh, jeez. I mean. And can we like, get you doing this with a Rocky montage theme in the back? <laughs> So funny story to that, I'm sitting in a hotel room near the Grand Rapids airport right now, and I'm flying to Philadelphia tomorrow. So I might actually go to the art museum and try to do like the rocky run up the stairs to make it work. <laughs> but if I'm going to run from one end of Burning Foot to the other end of Burning Foot, it would it would depend on if there's people inside the circle. No people. But you're, if you're, there's no people, I got probably like a six minute run. That sand is tough, man. It's hard <laughs> to run through that. It's hard. I'm not as young as I used to be, dude. I try, but it takes me a minute. <laughs> All right. That's the Michigan series for Burning Foot Beer Festival 2022. Mich or, uh, tickets are still available. Is camping still available? Yes, it is. Camping RV is still camping is sold out. 10 campings available. 10 camping is still available. Come join me 
Maybe I'll bring some uh, party favors for the campgrounds that you can uh, enjoy with us at Better On Draft. My name is Ken for my co-host, Tito. Thank you so much for uh, swinging by and subbing in on a Monday night. Wendy, of course, it's always great to have you. Glad you are back and safe from one of your many, 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 many trips that you take. Um, A lot of us are jealous of your trips, that's for sure. Uh, But that's going to do it. Uh, Michigan Beer, episode 30. No matter what you think of your beer, we think it's... Better on draft. Have a good night. Peace.